Ladies and gentlemen, time is of the essence. Artificial intelligence is knocking at your door. Chat GPT is right amongst us. It is scraping the internet, pulling information, and making you look like an absolute buffoon. I was shredding the slopes here in Zermatt with some of my buddies, and eventually we got lost, right? We got separated on the slopes, and you get paired up with random people when you go up the gondola. I'm in a situation where, you know, I'm paired up with this random kid, 16 year old. He checks out my snowboarding outfit. He's like, hey, that's a dope outfit. We start chopping it up. Long story short, 16 year old kid has a 4.1 GPA, top of his class in high school, best of the best, worked his ass off to be in a situation where he could get a nice college scholarship, to be in a place where, you know, he can be financially secure. Well, young man, what do you want to study? Well, I want to study engineering. Excuse me? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be studying engineering and when I graduate in eight years, I'm gonna be in a really good place. I'm gonna be able to make ends meet. I'm gonna have a really good paying job. I said, sir, let me ask you a question. In eight years, by the time you graduate and you begin your career, will artificial intelligence replace your newfound skill set? Because when it comes to mathematics, precision, numbers, statistics, and probabilities, artificial intelligence is a lot more powerful than any human alive. You need to be building companies of the future. You need to be doing things of tomorrow because based on Moore's law, technology is advancing extremely quickly and it's becoming extremely cheap and cost efficient. The fact that somebody right now in Africa, in a third world country, has access to artificial intelligence to fundamentally and radically change their lives, now we've democratized access to big things. The question is, Will you be consumed by artificial intelligence? Live in the past? Live with this bullshit idea that college and university will be worth it? Or you're gonna understand where the world is going eight, 10, 15, 20 years from now, and you will position yourself accordingly. Instead of studying engineering, why don't you become a software engineer? Why don't you become a machine learning expert? You'll be in a situation where now you integrate with AI and you still get to exercise your passion in university. So I told him, hey, bro, you should really check it because at the end of the day, you to the university, you are a customer. You are a number. As much as they want to give you the alumni, the colors, that's all a cultish identity. That's how they charge you for a whole lot of shit. So ladies and gentlemen, start using artificial intelligence. You are in fucking Zermatt, Switzerland with your boys, shredding the slopes, independent, free, rich, and you didn't compromise your soul in the process. That's right. And that is why you're successful. That's right. And keeping that at the front of mind will allow me to reach another level of success. And that level of success is personal success. The Bible says it. What does a man gain if he gains the whole world and but loses, loses his, his soul? soul? Yeah. You gain nothing, bro. This is all a video game. It's a test. It's a test, bro. <laughs> so no comparison, bro. The comparison is you yesterday. Everybody's fake. You can crack the code. What's the code? Be fucking legit. And people don't even tap into their fullest potential because they want to be somebody else. Hence why I don't fucking compare myself to anybody except the dude in the mirror. Well, I don't know about your life. Or, like, I'd be delusional to compare myself to anything about you, except I know that you're a great guy, we're friends. But there's so many things that are happening in the psyche, the subconscious, the family, all these things that construct the dynamic of somebody else's life. I don't want somebody else's life. I'll make my life a great life and a life to enjoy. It's like the same thing with chasing success or the next thing. People like achieve $100,000 e-commerce store, which when you started drop shipping, that was like the thing. If you yeah. could do $100,000 in a free. month, that was a shit. As soon as you hit it, you don't even enjoy it because you see the guy doing a million. Right. You had originally forgot that you were a scrub at zero, but the problem is comparison is the killer of joy. It robs you of the joy. Why? Because your energy isn't focused on you. It's focused on somebody else. That's why I love the hate. I love when people talk about me because they're just giving me their energy so that I can wield it and get richer. What, what, are people, what do people say about you? People love me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I define wealth as your ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. In order to do that, you need health, you need relationships in order to move around effectively, you need money, your finances need to be secure, your mind needs to be in check. It doesn't matter if you're healthy physically and have a ton of money if your mind is completely fucked, right? I know a ton of, dude, look at all the celebrities, look at all the actresses and actors that kill themselves. They have money, they have fame, they have good physiques, they look nice, they have all this shit, but their mind is corrupted. So the goal to be wealthy is your mind needs to be healthy. Your body needs to be healthy. Your bank account needs to be healthy. Wealth, by definition, is abundance. So what is abundance? Making sure that everything in life is properly set up. You don't want to have an abundant bank account in an empty mind.
You don't want to have a destroyed body or destroyed relationships and have a billion dollars. Every billionaire that I've talked to, I think a total, it's been like six. Everybody tells me the two most important things in their life right now is lifespan longevity, biohacking, like how do I increase my life and how do I spend more time with the people that I love? But they understood that in order to maximize health and relationships, they needed money. So they went, they got the bag, but they didn't let the bag identify them. And once they got the bag, they shifted their priorities. The problem is people don't know how to reinvent themselves. I reinvented myself multiple times. People confine you to a box. First, they were like, Luke is the e-com guy. Did fucking millions and millions and millions of dollars in e-commerce. Went and did consulting, but no, he's the e-com guy. I'm whatever the fuck I want to well, be. I was the NFT guy. There you go. So you're in a situation right now where people are going to always try to box you up and limit you. But if your mind can be freed, your mind can be limitless. It's limitless based off of the information that you inject into it. The information that you have, and I've said this before, has given you the life that you have. So if you want a different life, input different information. Uh, you're a big Bitcoin guy. Yep. So what do you think? I think Bitcoin is the only one that's going to last for the longevity of all of our lives. I think crypto as a whole is just dressed up to basically disperse the money from the Federal Reserve when they do monetary policy. Zero percent rates basically make Ponzi scheme. You can see in the market there's ICOs in 2017, there's NFTs in 2020, 2021. All this money is just printed all over, it needs places to go. People dress up all these projects as little schemes to basically funnel the money from the Fed into their pockets, then everything blows up. Then taxes are are due everyone goes broke and then the whole cycle repeats again but bitcoin's the only one that's been you know surviving since 2008 and it's still here today it's the only one that just keeps going yes there's bubbles it's the monetary policy pumping in pumping out qe qt back and forth again and again and again but bitcoin always makes higher lows every single cycle isn't it funny how society tends to crave, desire, materialistic things like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, mansions, when some things that are free are so much better, so much more beautiful. We're out here climbing the mountain, grounding, enjoying the cold weather, and just appreciating creation itself. And if you ask me, I feel like this experience itself is way more wholesome. Stick to the important things. Appreciate the small things. Appreciate the free things because perhaps they're a lot better than those created by myth. Many people have their parents stun them and their growth is stunted because their parents have fear of, oh, my son or my daughter are gonna get hurt or they're gonna end up in trouble. Or completely the other side, they just hate success. Mm -hmm. They think that all rich people are bad people yeah. or they think that money's bad when in reality, they're just ignorant. Yeah. So now I was in a situation where I realized my parents' advice with regards to how to live an ideal life was not cut out for me. Why? Not because their advice wasn't applicable, but because I did not want to live the life that they had. And the life that they had was based off of the information that they knew. And therefore, the information that they knew was filtered through and their advice came only from the information that they have. So if their life isn't amazing and the information that they have isn't amazing, then most likely their advice isn't amazing either. Mm. So I was like, fuck yeah. what my parents think. And I know that sounds insane. Like people go, oh, oh, Luke, you're disrespectful to your parents. Yes. Brother, your parents won't feel disrespected when you retire them, sit them in a nice little Ferrari in Monaco with the entire family gathered around the table overlooking the coast and all your parents are happy there sipping their nice little Italian wine, seeing all the grandchildren running around. You're, you won't hear them you're bitching. And, question. You, you won't hear them bitching and complaining yeah. at that point. Um, but what you're going to have to go through is a season of echo chamber of negativity. You can't do this. You shouldn't do this. You should be worried. Why? Because they've been conditioned. This is how it's going to be in the future. You're going to come to the bank, right? Try to get your money out, right? You're like, it's, it's over. I need my money. You're going to try to get it all out. And then it's going to say, oh, no, we don't have that much. And then you're like, okay, I'll take that. You'll take the 500, the measly five. And then it's going to go, oh, no, never mind. You can't get that either. And then. Your money is trapped. Well, it says you can only get 250. Can you try and get 250? There we have it. There you go. $250. That's what UBS Bank has available. It doesn't matter if you have millions of dollars in the bank right now, bro. Yeah. You can only withdraw $250 cash. That is the banking fraud, ladies and gentlemen. Print money out of thin air, buy all the assets, extract all the liquidity and the cash of the system, and introduce central bank digital currencies. This is a cool currency, though. It is pretty cool. Look at the back. Please don't rip it. This is a nice bill. All right, let me try to get more. Give me my money!
Where's my money, motherfuckers? The banks are not the safest place to leave your money. I know you're big on investing. What are your favorite places to invest? And what do you think are some of the safest investments people should be making? So when you buy dollars or you receive dollars for your time, yeah. you are receiving an investment, right? An investment vehicle. The reason banks are not safe is because they don't hold on to your money. They're doing what you should be doing for yourself, which is investing and multiplying your money. So these guys, they come take your money, they fractionalize it. And then what do they do? They lose it all. They go on a bank run. They say, say, oops, well, your FDIC insured covered. But then you actually read what FDIC insurance is based on the faith and good credit of the United States of America. That's what your money is insured by, by good faith and credit. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So I like to build a basket of assets that keeps me well protected in times of turmoil. We can clearly tell that this is a time of turmoil. Absolutely. So a basket of assets that's very reliable, one kilo of gold, one kilo of silver. You're going to have 10,000 Swiss francs because Switzerland is the banking capital of the world. Mm -hmm. You're going to have 10,000 US dollars because the United States is the military superpower of the world. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have 10,000 Singaporean dollars because Singaporean dollars are the least inflated currency and they're the fintech capital of the world and they're absolutely booming. Not only that, that's on the fiat side and on the kind of the physical side, but you also want some Bitcoin. The reason you want some Bitcoin is because Bitcoin is not going anywhere. Bitcoin needs to be part of your portfolio. So have a physical piece, have some gold, have some silver, have some fiat placed in different jurisdictions and have some Bitcoin. And I think that's a good basket of assets if World War III hits. Don't leave it here. Hell no, bro. <laughs> These motherfuckers don't know shit.